Hey everyone, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I would like to talk about basics. Basics really don't have to be boring, and that's what I want to prove in this video. But basics are important to help build out a nice foundation in your wardrobe. It's going to help you get dressed a lot easier, faster in the morning, just because if you have really strong basics and things that you feel comfortable in, then you can layer over your more exciting pieces, like this blazer. I love this blazer. It's got this cool little on the back, and I think it just looks really nice with the navy. So that's an example of that. Um, yeah, so most of these basics I picked up today from Zara, even though one item is from H&M. And I was actually really pleased with the quality of all of these things. Frankly, with basics, I find that even when I spend really premium, like for example, my Ray t-shirts, I just wear them so much that, granted, my Ray t-shirts are still in good shape, but like a t-shirt or t-shirt, if you wear it every day, you're going to wear it out. Obviously, yeah, you want one to wear well, but at the same time, I don't mind spending a little bit less on basics because I'm gonna beat them up to be perfectly honest. And so actually, you know what? Let's start with the first piece. Here's a great example of that. This is a top that I've had for probably three or four years now from Zara. And it's one of my favorite layering pieces because of the silhouette. It's got this like square neck, which I just find particularly flattering on my body. I like how it has a really high back to it. And yeah, I just find that it's a really great piece to wear under pretty much anything. So when I saw that they had more of these come out this year, because the thing is at this point, this one is starting to lose the seaming. So I'm still going to wear it, honestly. It's just one of those things that I know, like the hem is starting to fall out, for example. It's really starting to get super ragged. So like, yeah, I'll keep it. But at the end of the day, I probably should get a replacement. So I ended up getting one in both black and white. And I'm so happy that I did because I've been wearing them all the time. It's honestly the exact same shirt. This one is a little bit shorter. Um, but other than that, it's pretty much the same. It's got that beautiful square neck that I love. It comes up really high in the back and it's like the perfect, perfect layering piece. And so very, very happy that I have this. I love that it's very streamlined to the body as well. With layering pieces, you wanna make sure it's a little bit tighter just because if you are adding pieces over it, and for me in particular, a lot of my like cooler pieces are more oversized or have a lot of texture and stuff to them. So having really sleek sort of basics to just keep, add a little bit of juxtaposition to the crazy, I think is, is important. So that is the first little piece that I picked up from Zara was sort of a replacement tank top. The next piece that I got from Zara is a little bit of a step up. It's actually a sweater and I'm not going to lie. I have an amazing sweater collection. I have a ton of cashmere sweaters, but I just, I wanted a lighter weight, a little less warm. I wanted one that could really be more of a transitional piece as well, in addition to something that could be layered. So I wanted just something lighter weight. I did enjoy the little gold buttons that we have here on the sleeve. If they were any like bigger or more ornate, it could go into scary territory, but I thought they were subtle enough that they add a little bit of shine. Yeah, embellishments can be tricky. They can either cheapen the look of something or they can elevate it. And I don't think this really does either in this case. It just adds a little more visual interest to it. So I do like the little buttons and I got this in a size small. I also got the tank top in a size small. And for reference, I'm 5'7 and about 130 pounds. And this one fits great. I also love this really wide band on the bottom of it because it fits on the tummy nicely. I can tuck it in really well into jeans and skirts and it's not too tight. There's still a little bit of room around the stomach and stuff that I don't feel uncomfortable wearing this as its own top. It's not so tight like the tank top that I'd probably want to wear something on top of it unless I'm just really warm. So this can really stand on its own but it's just a really good basic layering piece. Beautiful crew neck sweater. The material feels really soft. I mean, it is fast fashion, so I'm sure it's some form of polyester or something, but it does the job. Very happy that I bought this. 
The next top is one that I actually got a little upset about. When I first got it and I tried it on, I wasn't over the moon with it. And I sat on it a little bit and I was like, no, like I do like the neckline. And the neckline is really what sold this top to me. This is the one piece that's from H&M and this is like a ribbed, long sleeved black top. You can see a little bit of the texture here. And what I loved about this top was this super modern, high boat necky kind of. It's not really a true boat neck because it doesn't go, it doesn't show much of the shoulder. But I just love this really modern cut on the neck. And the thing that I didn't love about it is it has a little more fabric than I would like here on the sides. But when I tuck it in, which is honestly what this shirt was meant for, I wanted to tuck this into high-waisted trousers and high-waisted skirts. And it looks really good when you do that. You actually don't even notice these little extra sort of pockets of fabric. The ribbing kind of just skims your body. So I'm glad that I held on to it because I think it looks really, really chic. It just makes the outfit a little more interesting, even if you're just wearing black flats with black cropped trousers with this and have a cool little statement necklace like sticking out of it. I just think it looks really chic and really modern. And this is, this is a great example of something to buy if you're on a budget and you still want to look great. This is something I would have bought in college. I mean, I'm still buying it now. It's not like I only buy it in college, but this is something I would have bought in college and it would have looked so much more expensive and elevated and I would have worn it for years and years and years. This is just such a good go-to. If, if you don't have a lot of money to spend and you want to elevate your wardrobe and you want to look really chic, I always think you should go for black, number one, because it's very hard to tell inexpensive black fabrics than embellishments or sweaters or just things that, you know, usually tend to require a higher caliber of, of uh, material. But a black, you know, rib like this without actually going up and touching and feeling and looking at the contents can be very hard to tell if this was $200 or if this was $20. So I think this was a really good buy from H&M and I just, I just love this neckline. I honestly can't get over this. And the final piece that I want to talk about is the one that I'm actually wearing. So this, you might be thinking, actually, that's a lie. I have all of these pieces hanging up here and then I actually have a pair of shoes that I want to talk about, which kind of has its own story with it. So I figured I would save that for last, but the top that I'm wearing is a lot more preppy than I would normally go for, to be perfectly honest. But I feel like when I pair it with more casual silhouettes, like oversized blazer with the oversized trousers, I think it looks really cool and it kind of elevates what might look a little sloppy if I didn't have something preppier or more structured underneath. So I've been very into this top. I think it's a great transitional sweater similar to the other black sweater just because I mean I don't know where you live but in New York City like even though it's fall there are going to be waves of heat probably now until December so it's always good to have a sweater that's a little bit lighter can you can sweat in it and Cause like, I don't know about you guys, but like, I hate when I sweat in my cashmere sweaters because it's so hard to wash them. It's extremely frustrating you have to hand wash them. It's just like a whole ordeal. So I feel really good about being able to just sweat in this and then throw it in the washing machine. I do let it air dry. I would not put this in the, I wouldn't really put any of these clothes in the dryer. I tend to air dry most of my clothes just to prolong their life. But yeah, delicate, wash this, no big deal. Don't need to hand wash, do anything crazy with it. And I like the navy and I like the cream. This is like something a little new for me. I feel like wearing navy is rebellious for me, which is not saying a lot, I know, but uh, I just thought they looked really nice with my navy trousers. I would mix them with black as well. I think that looks cool. So I was very into this. The other thing that I loved about this was of course the high neck. I love a crew neck. I am very self-conscious of how long my body is in this regard. So I really don't like showing off like my chest area that much, if that makes any sense. I think I look really disproportionate when I wear strapless and stuff, but that's a me problem. Um, the other thing that I really, really love about this sweater is the length of the sleeves. I feel like these are so much more flattering than like, well, God forbid, like a cap sleeve, but even like a, like a sleeve that just cuts you off, unless you have like really toned arms, which like, I, my arms aren't bad, but 
it's tough. It's just tough to wear that kind of sleeve length. And I love this almost to the elbow sort of longer sleeve. I think it looks so much more flattering. And I actually have a similar version of this kind of in a turtleneck uh, with this like, I don't wanna call it three quarter sleeve because it's not even, it's like a third of a sleeve because it's like a third of my arm. But I have this in a version of this kind of in black and cream that I purchased last year from Zara and I love, so I knew I was really going to like this piece. And so far I've already worn it multiple times. So it's fitting into my wardrobe very well. Now, the final piece of sort of classic clothing, I feel like I need to call it classic clothing, not basic clothing. Cause I feel like society has just given basicness a negative connotation, which is a whole other thing. But I want to talk about these shoes that I'm wearing. So, <laughs> like I said, there's a story here. So uh, let me get a little closer because I feel like we need to get intimate on this. So these are the shoes. These are all leather, made in Italy shoes. <laughs> You're just poking me. Um, made in Italy shoes. And I saw these shoes originally on this influencer named Claire. I will leave a picture of her. She pretty much influences me on everything because she's amazing. I would say I love her, but I don't even know her. So I don't know. I love her style. There you go. So she had a pair of these exact shoes on. These are called the Ida shoes and I couldn't get them out of my head. I'm like, those are the perfect non ballet flat ballet flat. If anything, actually, they kind of look more traditional to ballet because they have the square toe, which is what I love so much about this shoe. And but they're not as feminine as the typical ballet flat that has the round, you know, y'all know the Chanel ballet flat, the rounded toe. That's really not my vibe. That like falls more into the prepper to preppy territory than I would personally like to go. What I liked about these shoes is that they look really modern, but they're nice flat. They cover my toe. It's just like the perfect twist on a ballet flat. It's a modern ballet flat. And so I really wanted to get these you can and frankly this is what i would recommend doing they've been sold out at a lot of online department stores so sense is a place that i love to get things from it's where i got my totem coat and some of my cold wall things and it's on net porte like i would really try to find this for you guys online but a lot of the sizes have been sold out and so that's what i'm, I'm trying to justify my behavior but there's really no justification for it so well okay I ended up ordering straight from the brand. Now, this actually is a good idea if you think about it because you're ordering straight from them, they are getting your money directly, they're not having to like sell wholesale to Nana Porte, then a Porte is buying them out, blah, blah, whole thing. So I feel like it is better to buy direct from brands. <laughs> the issue is, is I never purchased anything from this brand before. So I had no idea what my size was and I measured my foot, I tried to do the whole like size chart and do everything and I failed. I thought it was supposed to be a 42 based on my shoe measurements. I, if you guys watch my advanced jumping boots video, you will know that sizing is crazy and it can go all over the place for me. For example, in Gucci, my loafers are 41. My Princeton mules are a 42, but yet I'm a 10 in like the row and Jimmy Choo and like all these other brands. And so I can't be anything from a 40 to a 42. So knowing that I ordered a 42 because that's what the measurements kind of said I was supposed to be. And frankly, after the Hermes jumping boots incident, I was kind of traumatized. So traumatized. Um, anyway, so I ordered these and I got them and they were way too big. I will say, considering they come from Germany, this is a German brand. Oh, I didn't even say the brand name, which I'm gonna butcher, but it's called Aid. A E Y D E, Eid, Eid, Eid. And they came super quick. They came in three days, no exaggeration. DHL, very, very fast. So that was fantastic considering they're coming from another country. And I got them. They were too big. If you, they take returns, which I did check before I ordered them. You do have to pay for the shipping to return them. So I had to pay, I think it was $9.95 or something, to send the shoes back. These shoes retail for about $300. So, you know, 
know, yeah, I lost 10 bucks, but I wanted to get the size that fit, so I ordered them again. Also, I found a coupon code. I think you can use the code WELCOME. I'll leave what I used down below, and you can try that out. So basically, TLDR, uh, all the money that I ended up having to spend on shipping it back basically was like my coupon code, so I kind of didn't lose money, I'm telling myself. Anyway. So I sent them back and I ordered the 41 because I was like, ah, like I feel like it really just needs to go down one size. The 41 came. 41 was too big. So I was like, oh my God, I have to order these shoes a third time, third time. And these shoes are expensive and I'm waiting for refunds and it's like a whole situation. To be fair, the brand was amazing. I sent it back. They went back just as quickly as they came. So like, honestly, it only took about a week in order to do the return, get the refund, the whole situation. I would check though, because they do come through DHL if there's a DHL outpost near you, because I did have to walk it and take it to the DHL outpost in New York to send it. You can't just take it to like UPS or anything like that. So that also might be a limitation for you depending on where you live. Maybe just order them through a Nordstrom or Nota Forte or one of those brands that carry them. But anyway, third time is the charm. So the 40 arrived and I was like, please fit, please fit, please fit. <laughs> Cause I just can't. I was like, if these don't work, then I'm never ordering anything from this brand ever again. And so they did, they ended up fitting. And, um, I will say they're super comfortable in the soles. They have this sort of like padding, as you can see, that makes them very comfortable, but they are leather and you're going to have to break them in. So the first, I was like wearing them around the house to try to break them in because I have a trip coming up and I want to make sure that I don't walk around Paris and just cut my feet up. You're going to have to wear them in is all I have to say. They really hurt my feet. They hurt my feet right here and they hurt my feet, of course, in the back because they have this sort of stiff, like you can even see it. They move inward so you can see that this is kind of stiff which is normally good because you don't want like a loose ballet flat that doesn't stay on your foot and is like flopping around, but the leather needs to stretch out of it and you need to wear it. So I will say it took me like three or four days to break these in. And that was with me like putting them on, putting band-aids on my feet, putting them back on, being sad. <laughs> so I really, I love them now. This was a process that I had to commit to, so I'm just glad they were worth it. So I just wanted to give you guys that context because they're really beautiful shoes and they seems like a very cool brand. They have another pair of loafers that I swear cost completely ripped off because they look the exact same. And obviously I would rather purchase them from the actual brand rather than sort of one of the more big, big name guys. And so, yeah, these are also a new classic staple in my wardrobe. So very happy with everything I picked up and I think it's just going to be a really nice addition to all the other cool things that I've got going on. So yeah, that's it. I will see you all in my next video.